What's going on, guys? Briar Rabbit here. Today, we're going to be talking about this guy. This is a third party, brand new Dreamcast controller. So, this is actually a controller to use with original Dreamcast hardware from 1999 to 2001. It plugs directly into a Dreamcast, it's compatible with the VMU or other accessories that you would use with a Dreamcast controller. And uh, real quick, I just wanted to talk about the Dreamcast controller in general. Uh, the original Dreamcast controller was an okay controller at the time. It, you know, it was kind of neat that it had analog sticks and analog triggers at the time. And, of course, it had these famous two slots that you could put your accessories into. You know, things like a memory card or, you know, maybe a Game Shark. You know, whatever you needed in there. Uh, and it was pretty cool. It had this little window so you could see the screen of your VMU. Uh, but the problems with it are actually pretty... Well, I mean, they were apparent right away. First of all, the taper of the controller kind of tapers inward toward your body, which means that when you're grabbing it, your wrists have to be like really close together, and then they kind of have to bend outward like that, which doesn't make it very comfortable over long usage periods. Also, the analog stick here, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. It's actually made out of plastic, and even though it's got these nubs on it here, it's actually quite slippery, and... That was true from day one. It's just kind of a, an odd design choice to not cover that in some kind of rubber. The analog sticks are kind of ni nice. They feel like triggers, uh, but the D-pad, uh, no good right from the get-go. It's kind of loosey-goosey. It's, it's like weirdly raised off of the controller you can see there. Uh, it's never been all that good. And since the Dreamcast is such a good fighting game system, a lot of people went to third-party controllers or to arcade sticks. Uh, in the past, I've used stuff like this Mad Cat controller here, uh, which actually was my favorite controller to use when the Dreamcast was new because it was much more comfortable to hold. The, the shape of the controller and the grips was much more comfortable. And while the D-pad wasn't much better, the analog stick at least had a rubber coating on it, which is now kind of dried up and hardened over the last 20 years. And it had a six-button layout for fighting games, which was nice. So these... These two buttons could be used to duplicate the triggers functionality so that in fighting games you had a six button layout, which was much better. Now this controller is pretty much shot at this point. It doesn't really function as well as it used to on day one. Uh, I also had this, I believe this is an Interact controller and this one pretty much sucked from day one. Uh, it's more comfortable than the regular Dreamcast controller, but you can see these Big springy shoulder buttons are terrible. It does have the six button lay layout, uh, but the analog stick is terrible. The D-pad isn't very good. This one was pretty much a second player controller since when I bought it. So I was pretty interested when Retro Fighters came out with this Striker DC. This is a brand new controller for the Sega Dreamcast. It plugs into the original hardware and it duplicates all the functionality of an original uh, arc, or not arcade stick, but controller. So I picked one of these things up. They're about $50 online. I've seen them as low as $40. And, you know, it feels like a modern controller. Uh, it's got more modern sensibilities to the design of it. Uh, this thing, it's, it's very similar in the hand to holding something like a Switch Pro controller. Obviously, it doesn't have dual analog sticks, which you don't need on a Dreamcast. Uh, but, you know, it, it does feel like a much more modern controller. It does feel like a third-party controller still when you take all of the kind of accessories out of it. Uh, it is quite light, and you'll notice that, you know, it doesn't have the quality, heavy plastic feeling of newer, more modern controllers, but it also doesn't have all the rumble motors in it, which may account for that lightness. Uh, there are some cool features about this. The analog stick is a modern analog stick with rubber coating. The D-pad is a much improved design over the original controller. It does have turbo functionality for any of the buttons. And also it has these L and R buttons, which duplicate the trigger pulls. So if you're playing a fighting game, you don't have that six button layout over here, but you do have the trigger functionality uh, in button form. So you don't have to like, say you want to map this to a uh, punch and this to a kick. Uh, it can be a little weird using an analog stick in a fighting game or in a fast action game. So these are just duplications of this. This is just a full press by hitting the button, which is pretty nice. A couple of notes about this controller is the cord is much longer than an original Dreamcast controller, which is nice if you're sitting across the room 
Uh, it does plug in very easily to a Dreamcast. It clicks in very positively. It's not too tight. It's not too loose, uh, which is great. Uh, one thing I will notice is that the accessory slots, the back one is fine. There's, there's no problem here. The front one on my controller feels very, very tight. So if you plug in a VMU to this thing, you'll notice I, I really have to shove it in there. It feels tight around the sides here. And my worry would be pulling my VMU in and out of this thing over and over again is that eventually I'll cause cosmetic damage to this VMU, which isn't okay. So I'd really like to see them refine this cart, this, uh, this memory card slot here. Uh, I guess if you're gonna just put your VMU in once and leave it there, you should be okay. But you do have to change the batteries in these things relatively off, off, uh, frequently. Uh, the other note I really wanted to make is the analog stick. I don't like this analog stick at all. It feels like a matter, modern analog stick. It looks like a modern analog stick, but the, the press is extremely light on it. Um, you, you really, you have to use like almost no force to push this analog stick to full, you know, kind of full range here. And when you're used to other analog sticks, it can be kind of jarring going to this controller because, you know, you, you find that you don't, you're not able to go to halfway with the analog stick. You're always doing a full press because it's just so light to touch it. Um, they actually mention this in the included FAQ that comes with the controller. It's, it's the top thing. It says, why does the analog stick feel like it has a light resistance? And, you know, it has a couple of reasons for that. Uh, neither of the reasons are particularly satisfying to me. I think it's the feature about this controller that I don't like the most. Um, the D-pad itself is pretty good playing uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, playing uh, Capcom vs. SNK, or SNK vs. Capcom. Like, I was able to pull off special moves, no problem with it. It's a little bit of a weird feeling because there's, like, zero texture on that analog pad at all. Uh, but it's it's much better than the original Dreamcast one. And overall, you know, like if I'm going to play, especially a four button fighting game, uh, it feels good. Uh, a couple of notes. Uh, if they were to redesign this thing or come out with like a second generation of this controller, I would really like to see them put a normal analog stick in here, uh, a higher resistance analog stick, something that feels like it belongs on the Switch Pro controller, uh, an Xbox uh, one controller, a PS5 controller, something that has the same amount of resistance as other controllers you're used to. Because this is just, it's so light to the touch that it, it just feels somewhat cheap. Uh, also, I'd really love to see a six button layout here. I don't know why you would come out with a, a modern uh, Dreamcast controller that says Fighters right on the name brand uh, that doesn't have the six button layout. I mean, obviously you'd have to redesign the controller to be a little bit bigger. Uh, but I think that would be a compromise that I'd be willing to make for sure. And also, they really, really have to redesign uh, this front slot. I don't know. Maybe it's just my unit that has that really tight fitting slot. But man, it, it does make me worry about plugging this in and taking it out over and over again that eventually uh, I am going to see some cosmetic damage to my VMU, which is now 20 years old and working fine. I'd like to keep it that way. So that's this. This is a... Retro Fighters Striker DC Gamepad. Um, I think it's going to be, for the most part, my main Dreamcast controller. Uh, but by no means will it be the last time I ever look for a new Dreamcast controller. I'd love to get one like in a perfect world with a better analog stick and a six-button layout over here. The, the, the two buttons on the shoulders are nice. Uh, and it'd be nice if they kept that and added the the uh, six button layout, uh, but I'd, I'd happily sacrifice the shoulder buttons for a six button layout, which I think would just be much more convenient, especially for fighting games and action games. So that's it. That's the review of uh, <laughs> the Retro Fighter Striker DC. Uh, you know, you can buy a uh, original Dreamcast controller for about 20 to $25 online. This is much more comfortable, uh, but it is about twice the money. So Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.